Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alana and today we will be discussing All These Bodies by Kendari Blake. This will be a bubbly book review and it's going to be spoiler free so if you haven't yet read this book don't worry you can stick around and we can jump right into it. I'd also quickly like to thank The Nerd Daily for providing me with an early e-arc copy of this book in exchange for a review. And as always that website will be linked down below as with my other social media outlet that I'm most active on and that is Instagram. And also my rating? I will be telling you that towards the end because secrets. Okay so All These Bodies by Kendari Blake. How would I describe this book? I would pitch this book as a suspenseful urban fantasy coming of age story. So in this one we are taken back to 1958, that's when this is set, and our main character Michael is the sheriff's son. He has aspirations of becoming a journalist when he finishes high school and life as he knows it is pretty ordinary and pretty normal. The small town that he does live in gives off like a kind of a sleepy vibe is how I would describe it. Everybody knows everyone, nothing ever really much happens, but it's a safe space. That is until a string of murders kind of ends up arriving at their doorstep when one of the local families is murdered and in a peculiar way. So just as a little aside leading up to us meeting Michael in this town, there has been a murderer running rampant across a few different states in America and each victim is drained of blood. And the unfortunate victims in Michael's town are also drained of blood except at this crime scene there is a girl in the middle of the crime scene absolutely covered in blood. So there is your intrigue hook into the story and the ride pretty much starts right from there. So I can say that just from that blurb I was pretty intrigued and I did request to review this uh, just because I have read from this author previously. I have read the Three Dark Crowns series. How many are there? I can see four on my shelf and I know that there is a little uh, novella to go along with them as well and I can say that with this author's previous series it took me a book or two to get into it and then I was hooked because she does atmosphere like no other. And this book is A plus with the atmosphere again, uh, just a quicker pace and a quicker start than her other books that I've read. Blake just crafts this perfect little safe sleepy town bubble and then she essentially gets a sledgehammer and smashes that and we go from there. From memory I think there is also like a little author note aside in this one that says the author did pull inspiration from two different real life murders that happened or crime events that happened. So now that we know what the book is about we're going to jump into my spoiler free thoughts on it and I'm going to delve into characters, a few key issues that the author brings up and discusses. We're going to discuss the suspensefulness of the novel as well as the ending and any pros or cons. So to start off with Michael. He is our main character who we are seeing this story through and I feel like he is the perfect lens to access all the events because this is set in the 1950s so a few times with a few different older male characters they are appearing more jaded and not as open-minded. So by picking Michael as our main character we kind of get more of an array of the events and thoughts and feelings that are happening. So essentially he gets pulled into the story more because Marie, the girl who was found at the crime scene covered in blood, will only talk to him. And then this really cool thing happens where as Michael is recounting the story to us as the reader, the author adds in little tidbits of foreshadowing and hindsight and it kind of makes the whole story more bittersweet and real in a sense. So Michael himself is pretty much an open book. The story does kind of just flow through him. He was very easy to read through because of this. Marie in comparison was a little bit more tricky. So I liked Michael but Marie kind of 
She was purposefully complicated. And this is where the author kind of touches on child abuse slash childhood problems. We don't go too far into it, but there is that tiny element peppered in there. And it's all about her knowing that adults will not believe her story. Because, as you can guess from the suspense urban fantasy explanation that I kind of said at the start, and with the bodies being drowned of blood, vampire lore kind of filters through this. So she has her own story to tell, but she knows no one is going to believe her, so she purposely picks Michael and it's just she she is complicated and I feel like her character arc especially it's all about the choices that we make and the people that we put our faith in and how sometimes there is no right choice. So as of filming this I'm still not sure quite how to take her and that to me makes me feel like she was done well because I am conflicted about a fictional character. This also ties into my next point and that is that I feel like the author on one level was addressing the whole feminine fragility thing in the 1950s. And what I mean by that is sometimes people suspect Marie of being the murderer and sometimes people don't because she is a girl. And how could a girl do that? There's also other characters that are women that kind of take a bit of a backseat and that is just the times that this is set in. Like you have more of a housewife type role than the modern day family. But I do want to note that the author is kind of pushing back on this whole female as fragile, like that type of notion, and saying that female is more complicated than that and we are not just that. So I did enjoy that element to the story as well. And again, witnessing this conversation through Michael's point of view was good because he was more open. Whereas there was one character and he just really, really annoyed me because he constantly talked down to people that were younger than him and constantly talked down to Marie and it just grinded my gears so much but he was written in that way to serve that purpose. As for the suspenseful nature of this book, for the majority of the book it was going up. It was really well done because we have Michael and Marie in this situation where they have to converse in order for him to try and learn her tale. At the same time there is also something lurking in the dark. So we have that mystery element as well as the element of who is the murderer. The only two things that I found were more of a downside to this novel were the villain and the ending. And I know that these can also be explained away in the novel because of how it was framed and what it was doing. So in the sense of the novel it was doing right but personally I don't enjoy these things. So the ending of this novel in part there is a small part of this which is open to interpretation and it is really tricky for novels to pull this off and this really nearly does that. It's so close to pulling it off but for me it didn't quite get there. And as for the whole villain element because this is real world set and in the 1950s vampires are not thought to be real so you have this kind of folklore type element to the tale which then makes the big bad villain pulling the strings, more kind of cloak and dagger type. So for me, just in my own reading preferences, I would have preferred a more clear cut villain and a clearer ending, but at the same time I can see why the author chose to go where she went with it because it does fit in with the story. It's all personal preference is what I'm trying to get at. So all in all, you have very believable characters. You have a big murder mystery. You also have a coming of age story. And you have just this, this creepy thing lurking in the background, which did make this one eerie to read. And I was flying through this once I started it because it was just like, I had to know what was gonna happen next and answer all these questions. So do I recommend this book? Absolutely yes. This has urban fantasy spooky vibes. It would be the perfect book to read around October uh, if you celebrate the spooky season at all. I would also recommend this if you have previously enjoyed things by Christina Henry, in particular The Ghost Tree, because these share that real kind of spooky small town vibe when they never think anything's gonna happen, anything bad's gonna happen to them, 
and then their worlds explode. So overall, I think that this was a really well put together novel, a very positive reading experience for me, and I give it a four out of five stars. Let me know in the comments down below if this book is already on your radar, or if not, tell me one spooky book that you enjoyed, and I will talk to you more there. So that's gonna be it for me. I will see you in another one. Bye.